So I have today some time today to do some drawing and I'm going to tackle this scene which is very colourful, it's very busy, it's very complicated but I'm not really going to think about that, I'm going to start here and I'm going to make my way across and that's about as much as I'm going to think. Now obviously I don't normally use, well I do use pencil but I'm going to put it in here just as a bit of a guide. One of the things I like to do when I sketch is I don't get too sort of bogged down with detail. I like to be quite sort of free and loose, as is often the case with a lot of buildings. You know, the top windows will line up with the ones further down, so you can kind of look out for that. And it actually makes drawing them easier because you already know where they're going to be, if you know what I mean. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm keeping the pen work really wobbly, loose. I'm holding the pen right at the back. Uh, I'm purposefully trying to use this technique to stop me getting too bogged down with the detail. And if I do it this way, I mean, the other way you could do is, you know, is start sketching with your left hand. Uh, if you want to get even looser and that just goes crazy. I mean, you go all over the place with that. Look at that. Brilliant. Um, you know, there's loads of different ways you can... It doesn't look that different, actually, to my right hand. Maybe that's the mistake I've been making all these years. Maybe I'm truly a left-handed artist. How you actually draw these is you could separate them and draw one at a time. And then wherever you end up, you end up. Or you can start maybe with that one and then draw the silhouetting across the top and that will give you more accuracy. Today, I, I could sort of construct this and make it look really quite, uh, quite accurate, but I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over here and make my way across and wherever I end up is where I end up on this side. If I end up only getting to there or whatever, it doesn't matter. So this pen I'm using today here is um, my Opus 88 eyedropper pen. Um, it has a valve in the back which you can use to shut off the flow of the ink so it doesn't spill when it's in your bag. But the thing that makes it quite special in terms of the, uh, the ink itself is you fill up the whole of this with ink. There's a O-ring seal on here. So the cartridge capacity is, well, there's no cartridge, it's just a whole pen here. I've tried a few different nibs and things in this, but I've always gone back to the just the standard extra fine nib. It's funny, a lot of the videos I've done recently on YouTube about fountain pens, there seems to be, there definitely seems to be they seem to polarise people. I've had a lot of people comment and say that they wouldn't waste the money on a fountain pen ever again because they bought one and they just didn't have much success with it. And I get that. I completely understand that. Uh, other people who seem to be more like me who say, yeah, I don't mind them being a bit temperamental. Uh, quite like that. Um, and I think it, it, it does depend very much on or it can depend a little bit on your sort of idea of what is a perfect product in a sense. But yeah, I do feel we've lost sight really of the difference between need and want. I feel if we, you know, need a robot hoover on each floor and voice activated light switches, we need to get a bit of a grip on a sense of, you know, what is important in our lives. There we go. Not the best boat drawing, but it matters not. So there we go. That's quite fun. Now I could go in and put some uh, heavier line work and things in there now to try and pull some elements forward, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to paint it. And I'm going to be just as equally loose with the paint as, um, you know, as I have been with the line work. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to spray my... Um, watercolours. This just helps to get them sort of reacted. I'll tell you what, I'm going to paint and chat. So I'm going to start with the sky and I'm going to just run it down into the buildings a tiny bit, maybe onto the roofs. One of the things I uh, often contemplate uh, with my channel 
is that I'm trying to so I was banging on about people being fearless uh, and just going for it with their art and not being too tentative. But then I feel that, you know, because I've been drawing for a long time and I have my um, my style in a way, that I don't actually do that myself in a way. You know, I often look at drawings, a bit of cobalt blue here. I often look at the drawings that I do and my you know, painting. And because I'm doing it as a presentation to you guys, you know, because I'm actually doing it, I'm using my nice um, porcelain palette today. Uh, yeah, because I'm doing it for you guys, I, I kind of want it to be right, if you know what I mean. So I often feel, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of uh, French ultramarine in there as well, I like a bit of darkness. So anyway, as I'm saying, it's important for me to be loose and daft too. Now, what I'm doing here is I've put down a layer of water. Page is completely flat. And I'm just gonna build it going up like that. So I wanna put a bit of pink in the bottom of this guy as there is in the reference picture, which obviously you should be able to see. And I'm gonna use a quinacridone rose, which is the closest thing I sort of have to a pink color. Now this shouldn't really affect the uh, the blue too much. If it um, merges with it, it'll just turn into a sort of purple. Okay, so, and again, if I just, it's gonna be a bit strong at that, um, but as always, it will fade as it dries. And what I might do is get a clean brush, just wetting that off and I'll dry it. And then I'll use that to pull out a little bit of that pigment there. I don't want it too dark, actually. There we go. One of the things I'm not super keen about is that blob there. So I'm going to... Don't mind that. Right, there we go. So what's gonna be interesting is to try and pick up some of that pink, maybe in some of the uh, in some of the buildings. Just sort of attack it with some quite bright attack. Is that the right word? Just sort of put in some lovely yellows and some warm oranges and things like that. But the problem is it's all gonna merge into that, into the, the sky or the ground. And sometimes I quite like to do that, but one of the things that sort of makes these buildings is their is there sort of Lego block like shape? Okay, so I'll start with a with a, with a nice bright yellow, and we'll just go from there. I'm going to get a slightly smaller squirrel brush. This is a uh, I think a double O one or a double O two, uh, but this is the same thing. It's a little squirrel mop. So I'm going to use a warm. It's not more obviously. It's a a yellow Hansa. Uh, hands are yellow. These are Daniel Smith's colours that I'm painting with today. And it's it's a sort of primary yellow, really. It's not really warm or cold, this one. It's very much in the middle, which is good, because you can use it for mixing a lot of other colours by adding warmer or colder tones to it. Okay, so I'm going to keep that yellow that I've mixed up there and I'm going to put a bit of the transparent red oxide in there and I'm going to just turn that into a sort of yellowy orange and find me more buildings. Right, I can do this one here. Right, so I'm going to mix a bit of water in here because there's a few of these buildings that have some just nice texture on. So I'm going to just add a bit of patina to them. It's almost like they've been slightly repainted or patched up a little bit. Um, I mean, the other thing about some of these as well is they've obviously got quite a lot of pink in them. Or the light has got quite a lot of pink in it. Um, 
so they not are, are sort of strictly white, if you know what I mean. It's insane, isn't it, Venice, when you think about it? I mean, all these buildings are based on, like, 14th, 15th century green piles. It's, uh, it's pretty mad. It must be a really weird place to live, you know, as a local. So if you look at the windows as well, a lot of these windows are, are dark. Obviously, you're looking into dark spaces, so I'm not going to leave all these windows as just, like, white spaces like that. I'll probably you know, go and fill in them with some different colours. Some of them have doors and things in, so. Now I want to mix up a colour for these tiles. Okay, so these are quite a uh, sort of seminal part of the Venetian look, aren't they, these tiles? I'm not going to be shy with the colour. I'm going to go and Put something quite bold on there. I love it. I love this bright orange. It makes me very happy. It's one of my happy colours. I should probably buy more clothes in this orange because then I'll be a happy chappy all the time. Basically, what I'm trying to do is just add a little bit of um, a little bit of dots of colour, you know, some really nice little dots of colour, just to try and break up some of those big spaces. And then we've got an awful lot of um, what I would just call grey for these windows. So I'm going to use my usual mix of. French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. Uh, it's not Burnt Umber, I'm lying. Van Dyke Brown. Right, so we've got this colourful scene. It's looking strong. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some lowlights and highlights in the water. What I've done is I've mixed up a little bit of that gouache. I've just diluted it with water. Um, now you should still be able to see the colour below because when it dries, again, like watercolour, it does go slightly transparent, so. Managed to get it everywhere, as always. Right, so there you go. What do you think of that? It's a mixture of colour, loose, fun. That's what I call that, fun. So as I said, I wanted to do a really rough, kind of colourful celebration of a picture. 
Um, so what did I want to achieve with this picture? Well, I wanted to have a lot of fun. And look at this. Look at it. Fun, fun. <laughs> I sound like I'm insane. Anyway, yeah, it's been great. Um, I just got to remember to cut out all the singing that I was doing earlier when I was painting. All right, guys. Peace and love.